Thank you very much, dear President Ambassadore. Thank you, Mr. Dean and friend. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very honored to have the opportunity to uh, make an excursus. I will use some Latin word, do not blame me so much, uh, in, uh, in a, a, sort of, a sort of giro del mondo, a trip around the world. Uh, the title of my speech is New Cultural Wars in the Digital Era. Can soft power and cultural diplomacy be an, an, an antidote? I will concentrate especially on monuments. Uh, you know that the word monument uh, is, uh, comes out from the Latin, monere, monere uh, in Italiano, ammonire, avvisare, consigliare, let's say in English, admonish, to advise, to warn. It's very strange to remember that the etymological source is the same for moneta, but for a historic reason. When I was the mayor of Rome from my window, I could see the walls of the ancient temple of Junone, the wife of Zeus, uh, moneta. But moneta me meant warner. Her advices were decisive to this to, to see if Rome should, have, should go to war or not, should seal a peace or not. And of course, it was necessary to look at the birds fly. Uh, why, why money comes from Junone Moneta? Because the mint of the ancient Rome was there. So when we talk about money, monne, munzen, moneda, the root is there in Capitol Hill, and the, and the, the word is the very same than monumento, monumento ammonire. The, a monument explains us what should we do, and uh, admonishes, advises, warns. I will uh, concentrate on a, a current debate that is very, very important, but just with, with some short reflections. Cancel culture is something we are discussing today very much. I suggest a, a nice article on the New York Times a couple of years ago by Ras Du Yuzak. Uh, his uh, 10 points are very interesting, and I underline that uh, he says, all cultures cancel. The question is, for what, how widely, and through what means? Some figure, of course, we share the fact that uh, racist or anti-Semite uh, must be cancelled. Uh, the internet has changed the way we cancel, radically. And extended cancellations reach because, of course, we know that under the rule of the internet, I quote, there is no leaving the village. Everywhere is the same place, and so is every time. You can be cancelled for something you said in a crowd of complete strangers. If one of them uploads the video, or for a joke that came out wrong, if you happen to make it on social media, or for something you said or did a long time ago, if the internet remembers. And you don't have to be prominent or, or political to be publicly shamed and permanent, permanently marked. All you need is to have a particularly bad day and the consequences could endure as long as Google. So the internet has also made it harder to figure out whether speech is getting freer or less free. It's a great debate, it's open. Uh, I would suggest also uh, our students, uh, because my conference, let's say, is food for thought. 
I don't have recipes. I don't have certainties. I will suggest to you opinions and to fertilize your mind with some images I will show you. Uh, I hope also opening a critical way of reading these events and thinking about them. Uh, of course, uh, cancel culture is not only about the internet, it's not only about uh, monuments, that will be the uh, argument of my conversation. Just to give you a few examples that are very interesting, Amona V. Recently, uh, a movement has been created to abolish two songs, American Pie, celebrate, celebrated song of 71, I think, my generation, bec because of the responsibility of the author and singer, not the content of the song because it was responsible for abuses. So what to do about the song? Somebody said it must be erased. Uh, or Brown Sugar, Rolling Stone song, that is quite racist. And Rolling Stone uh, used to pick it out from their concert and, and um, reproduction of, of, the, of their collections. What to do about songs that today we want to discuss? What to do about Ovidio? <clears throat> Some students uh, refused to study Metamorphosis, a fundamental text by Ovidio, because it was about, somehow, about rape. Or street names. It's very interesting uh, to see that, for instance, in... Uh, for purely political reason, for, in, for instance, the, the mayor of Budapest to support the, the, the opposition to Chinese policies decided to rename all the streets around the Chinese embassy in uh, Budapest uh, to Dalai Lama Road, Free Hong Kong Road, Huigur Martis Road. Or, for instance, in uh, Zambia, it's, it's nice, when, the, when uh, Saddam Hussein uh, gave a shipment of oil to the government of Zambia, the, a great road was named upon Saddam Hussein. But after, after his fall, it has been rebaptized in Los Angeles Road. <coughs> and so what should I say in Rome? Uh, it was absolutely appropriate to remove Adolf Hitler Road and rename to the, uh, upon the partisan who fought for freedom. I don't know if it would be appropriate to erase La Salita dei Borgia. The family of the Pope was a great Pope of the Renaissance, but at the, at the very same time some, somehow corrupted and with some difficult and critical and criticize the siege. So uh, I will start after this introduction that is uh, dedicated to open a discussion and open a critical survey. I will start uh, with uh, something that is not personal. It is to show you that it is not personal. My uh, great grandfather, <clears throat> was a sculpture, and uh, in my family I have a great experience of destruction of monuments or controversies about monuments. This is the monument devoted in Rome, Gianicolo, to Anita Garibaldi, the hero, she hero, who helped uh, uh, free Italy, the wife of uh, Garibaldi. That's very interesting that my great-grandfather was asked, not necessarily kindly, by Mussolini to add a boy because she was a fighter. She was able to uh, get a horse with very, very brilliant capacity, but she had also to be a mother. So Anita Garibaldi, diciamo, a Roma è l'unica donna che cavalca, allatta e spara. 
This is uh, always made by Mario Rutelli, my great grandfather, a monument uh, along Corso Vittorio, <coughs> Piazza Sforza Cesarini. It's also very interesting. It's a monument of a priest, un abate, very, very brilliant priest. You see he has a book in his, uh, in his left hand about human rights. That was astonishing, amazing. Why a priest? He was a real supporter of free thinking. So the anti-clerical, anti-Catholic organization decided to devote to him a monument. My great-grandfather won the competition, uh, but at the very end, the Catholics said, but why should we participate in a, inaugurating a monument that is about a priest but wanted by the enemies of the priest? And the uh, anti-Catholic said, but why should we have a monument about a, a, gay, a guy who is really brilliant, open mind, a priest who doesn't seem to be a priest, who wrote a treaty on human rights, so nobody, nobody wanted to inaugurate this monument that was opened by the questore, the chief of the police, at midnight to avoid <laughs> turmoils. Again, this is Palermo. Palermo, al always and again, and finally, Mario Rutellis, but no, that was the era where the monuments started to be considered as a common heritage in terms of sharing a common culture and a common identity. Francesco Crispi was the, one of the first uh, prime minister of United Italy. Palermo he was a Sicilian, this is Palermo. And this monument is very frequently uh, attacked uh, with manifestation and also throwing some objects. <laughs> Why that? One cent after one century? Because he was uh, responsible, Crispi, for some colonial Italian adventures. So today, this monument is under discussion. So my speech, uh, that's a short introduction to explain that it's not personal. It's, <laughs> I do know how and why always and always monuments are there to be discussed. Sometimes are there to be removed, always are there to be studied in order to understand what history has to teach us. Of course, we knew in the <clears throat> last decades some tragic events. These are the great Buddhas in Afghanistan, Bamiyan, uh, along the Silk Road. They were destroyed by the Taliban, 2001. This is Mosul, when ISIS, Daesh, destroyed the Mosul Mosque during the uprise in the uh, ISIS uh, 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 fight. This is Palmyra Museum. Palmyra, an extraordinary city loved by anybody in the world. Uh, and that is the museum of Palmyra, ravaged and completely uh, uh, cancelled for the very same reason. Um, again, these are two busts coming from this event, we'll talk about it later. And this is one of the most horrific pictures taken in the world in the last decades. This is the explosion of the Bell Temple in Palmyra, completely cancelled by this, uh, by this uh, a, a, a prize. Why that? Of course, because uh, what we do call iconoclasm, what we do call uh, something unacceptable, was legitimately assumed by the Taliban when in power, since Buddha is a non-legitimated -legitima religious personality there, or because for Islamic, Islamist fundamentalist, uh, the winged bull protecting Nimrud 
should not absolutely exist, should not absolutely exist, because the, uh, uh, this winged bull protecting the ancient, today we say Iraqi, Mesopotamian culture, should not exist under uh, uh, extreme vision by the fundamentalistic Islam. That's let, let it's, it's, uh, it's their rule. Where a rule is also a universal one, uh, you see, uh, we get UNESCO conventions. And we decided since many decades that the value of culture is a universal one. It belongs to each people, it belongs to a nation, it belong, belongs to a people, it belongs to a religion, but it belongs to humankind. That's what we did decide uh, uh, subscribing international conventions and ambasciatore. Vattani is among the most important personalities in our diplomacy in the international world who knows that, who did that, who practiced that, supporting culture as an instrument of comprehension, mutual dialogue, building of common solutions rather than radicalization in fights and distraction. So, of course, iconoclasm, distraction of culture can't belong to us because we think that culture is a universal belonging to all humankind, regardless to religious, political, and personal beliefs. That's why we call it world cultural heritage. Of course, uh, in, du during history, monuments are here to be seen, to be judged, to be criticized, only if indispensable when there is a regime change to be removed or, I will suggest, sided by different alternative visual explanation to better understand history. Because I think that gagging or censoring history is a leap, a giant leap backward. And I think that sanitizing history is an impossible task and a wrong task. We must study try to understand, critically analyze history, adopt changes in our time rather than canceling that. Of course, there is a part of elements of the past that must be canceled. Who decides that? Let's see and let's have, a, uh, how to say, a, I, I told you, a un giro del mondo, a short tour of, of the world uh, between the universal value of culture and local, uh, national, religious decision. Uh, so please fasten your seat belts because we, we start this, this tour. Uh, here we are in uh, California. This, uh, uh, this police car tries to protect Cunipero Serra, a saint who had many important responsibility in, uh, uh, let's say, making better society when the Franciscan, you perfectly know that Franciscans are at the origin of California. I don't know, how many people are here from California? Nobody, one. So you, know, you perfectly know that the, the cities are called upon San Francisco, county of Santa Clara. Mm, for instance, the, uh, the, I said in a recent meeting, uh, the very name of Los Angeles is, uh, uh, the Pueblo is the name upon uh, Nuestra Señora, la Reina de Los Angeles, de la Porciuncula, the very place where San, Franc San Francis lived. It's very strange, nobody knows that. that, that such a special a small, small building, much, 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 uh, one-tenth of this all created uh, and under this history the biggest city of America, of the United States. 
Junipero Serra was uh, attacked because racist, because he did not support uh, indigenous population. Of course, we were in the uh, 17th century, did not, did not support the indigenous population's cultures and rights. Uh, this is uh, Cristoforo Colombo, Cristobal Colom uh, Columbus, uh, and this is not all in the States. A, a dozen of monuments de devoted to Cristoforo Colombo has been destroyed or uh, 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 erased. This is Mexico City. And uh, after some actions, now the monument to, devoted to Cristoforo Colombo, this is a, a, an image where it has been uh, substituted by uh, a, a, a woman a woman representing rights of indigenous women in, uh, in, La in, in America, Northern America and in Latin America. These are the Confederate generals, dozen, General Lee, gen dozen of uh, 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 personalities from the uh, uh, Confederate uh, are, have been removed in the United States. Um, this is uh, Baghdad, and that's a more, quite a religious issue. Uh, I'm talking about Abu J. Al-Mansur. It is a religious personality who was victim uh, during infights between Sunni and Shi Shiites. That's a very interesting issue. If you want to visit the British Museum, you can have also a peculiar guide under the name British Museum. Uh, you, can, you can wear your special glasses and, and, and over and under each uh, painting, you will have the description of slaver, uh, racist, raper, uh, inv invader, and so on, explaining why the great personalities who created this, uh, this uh, uh, history uh, must be discussed. Uh, I continue in my, in my so kings, queens, uh, uh, etc. Uh, that's more recent, but that's not, uh, this is a tw beginning of 20th century uh, sculptor, Eric Gill. He has been accused uh, con consistently of sex abuses. So this is a, a, a man uh, vandalizing and destroying uh, a, a work made by this sculpture. Um, uh, that's very relevant because many of those have been in New York and have visited the, the, uh, in New York the, uh, the Museum of Natural Art, and, and, uh, of, uh, of Science uh, in New York. That has, uh, uh, that has uh, been removed. Uh, who, 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 who's that? Who's that boy? Roosevelt. Roosevelt has been removed from the from one uh, the, the front of one of the most important institutions in the world, due to the fact that, as you as you can see, uh, he is surrounded by uh, uh, indigenous and a black person in uh, 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 let's say put in a non sufficiently considered position. Um, but pay attention, here starts some mm, dialogue, some dialectic, not distraction. Uh, this statue is, uh, will be uh, brought uh, at the presidential library so that everybody can judge Roosevelt if he was a racist or not in a more complex context. 
Uh, I don't know if any, any of you knows Edward Colston and the very place where this picture has been taken. We are in Bristol, Wales, and uh, Mr. Colston uh, was in the very center of the capital of Wales. His statue was removed and thrown in the channel because he was responsible for a uh, slave uh, transaction or traffic. Not only, of course, he had very prominent responsibility, very positive role, very important contribution to his country, but this event has been considered decisive. What's happening? That the Colston, Colston sculpture has been and will again be exposed to be interrogated in a public museum. It has been fished <laughs> from, from the channel, uh, restored, and put again in a position where it can be judged, not only with one single point of view, but in a more articulated position. That's another very good example uh, uh, here we are in Franklin, Tennessee, close to the statue that has been freshly inaugurated, a statue with uh, uh, black people uh, working for the army. It has been put close to a statue of an enemy of him. So the two statues can have a dialogue. The two positions can be measured somehow and can be put in a uh, uh, complex, uh, respectful, and anyway uh, uh, assertive, of course, from the different points of view, but not unilateral point of view. I do love very much this statue. Uh, a propos du, du, de, des esclaves, uh, here we are in Barbado Island. In Barbado, the government decided to build this eman emancipation statue. Freedom against slavery. We, ju we just don't want only to distract, de de destroy monuments re referred to, 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 slave, to slavery and, and racism, we want to build a proud monument about our emancipation. Uh, I, I shift to the contemporary. Why that? Because, of course, the monuments are here to ammonire, monere, but they are also contemporary. And the discussion, the, what, what we had seen is related to, to the past, and what do we do about monuments of the past in current times when we do discuss what happened during history. Uh, but, but monuments are uh, also contemporary. We, we build, we create monuments in our streets and roads, not always so uh, happy, not always so brilliantly. That has been absolutely <laughs> criticized. Statue of a celebrated, celebrated uh, Mary Wollstonecraft uh, founder of uh, UK feminism, and women movement <laughs> were upset by the, the, the shape of this monument, uh, thinking it was absolutely inadequate. Uh, Miss Thatcher, another contemporary monument, should have been honored in front of Westminster. But so many threats arrived because she was responsible of uh, capitalist view and uh, uh, against labor, according to a part of UK opinion, that it was impossible to inaugurate her monument in front of the UK institution. So the monument has been uh, brought in her uh, uh, the place, uh, birthplace, Grantham, but as you can see, she's she was hanged as the monument was inaugurated. So continuously, uh, uh, people must, must preserve, restore, 
clean up the, the, her monument. That's also another very interesting history. That's France, and that's a very brave Monavi monument to an Algerian hero of freedom. It's a sort of open, open dialogue between France and its colonial past. Mr. Abdelkader, Algerian hero, was remembered in uh, uh, Amboise by the special monument that was vandalized by oppo opposite people thinking that a, uh, a man from Algeria should not be honored on French soil with a monument. Of course, it has been then restored. Uh, here we are very close to to, to us, in Valle, a small, a small city in uh, Toscana. There is a sort of park with monuments. This is Mr. Putin made object of uh, an attack a few weeks ago after the opening of the war in Ukraine. Of, or we can shift to something more amusing and more uh, and, and less engaging. Uh, this is Harry Potter. Where do you think this monument is? It, does somebody want to try? Uh, this is uh, China, Shanghai. And this is, <laughs> why that? This is because in a, uh, uh, the, the place is named upon Thames, like uh, London River, Thames Town, a place where to attract also Western investors and people living there, so they created some monuments about cinema and about Western uh, paradigm in, in order to be more welcoming for this sort of... But not always this thing, these things work. I think some contemporary monuments are frankly deceiving. The triple age, I mean, Johnny Halliday, uh, Harley Davidson, and Mayor Hidalgo of Paris <laughs> inaugurated this monument devoted, it's a monument devoted to Johnny Halliday, but ju just, uh, just uh, last year uh, with uh, this um, <laughs> motorcycle on the top. So not also in Italy, we got some, this is uh, the, our, Beloved Totò, this is Naples, Vomero. I don't think Totò would be very happy to have this monument. Uh, and this is the fantastic, uh, no? Chi è? <laughs> si, Troisi, a great uh, art director and, and artist. Uh, in Il Postino, uh, Oscar Prize. Uh, I don't know if he would be so happy to have such a monument, but anyway, it's in his birth place in uh, San Giorgio Cremano, so anyway, it's not bad. I'll, I, I'm, I'm going back to monuments that fall inevitably. Where are, where are we now? We are when uh, the viceroy, vice king of India inaugurated in India monument of Queen Victoria. Of course, when a regime changes, a monument falls. So this monument is not there anymore. And if, you, if, if we go to Eastern Europe, that's Prague. And that was the biggest monument devoted to Stalin in Prague. Some, something very interesting is that, uh, and also I would like to, to ask you the, the question, who destroyed the monument of Stalin in Prague in uh, 61? Does anybody try to give an answer? Of course, the Soviet Union, due to the destalinization. <laughs> so they, they built for Stalin and destroyed it when Stalin had to be a myth, to be a little bit 
diminished or quite, quite a bit diminished. That is uh, maybe the only existing museum about Stalin. It's in uh, his birthplace, Gori, in Georgia. There is a, a huge museum regarding Stalin, and uh, this statue has, had been removed by Georgia in the first time, then the same government of Georgia put it back again. So monument can die, can disappear, but they can also have a rebirth. And uh, uh, this is Lenin, and this is Lenin in uh, Ukraine. Uh, I don't think if I make this, put this question to, 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 to you, how many monuments were removed or destroyed only in Ukraine devoted to Lenin? More than 1,300. You can imagine how many materials they, they have in, in the underground of the museum of, for building purposes. And of course, there were people against, people, uh, people in favor. And uh, here is something I do not share, I'm very frank. This is the destruction in Riga, Lettonia, of an obelisk devoted to the liberation of the country from Nazi rule. Because that monument was made by Soviet Union after the Ukraine war, the current, it was an obelisk, the current Ukraine, uh, Lettonian government decided to destroy it with an explosion you can see. I don't share. I think that if history shows that also the Soviet cooperated in the liberation of Lettonia, that is, that is history. That may be analyzed critically, but that is history. Anyway, that's history. Why to cancel history? So my conclusion could not be a, a, a negative one. Uh, something I only very shortly uh, examined was the colonial rule and the Eurocentric Western point of view of the colonizer, theft, confiscated memory in many, in many museums. I just give you uh, a couple of examples. The new uh, ethno-anthropologic museum, anthropographic museum, both in Berlin and in Paris, have huge problems. The great Humboldt Museum in Berlin, wonderful museum. And the Musée de Quai Branly, in Paris, each room of this museum has a problem because each of these objects come from the colonial past. So what to give back? What to do with the Benin bronze in London that were uh, uh, conquered by a catastrophic, violent action by British colonizer? What do we, the Italian, have done? less decisively, but always in uh, Libya, in uh, Eritrea, in Ethiopia, with responsibility that history shows quite clearly. So what to do about colonies, what to do about, uh, I think we must support, for instance, uh, the creation of Museum of Black Civilization in Dakar, Senegal, very important. We must support the same project in Pretoria, in Congo, in Lagos, and in Benin City Royal Museum in southern Nigeria. Uh, I, was tol tol to tell, um, I was talking about the Humboldt and Quai Branly. C'est uh, très, très remarquable. Le musée de Quai Branly n'a pas un nom. C'était impossible. Et alors, ils lui ont donné le nom d'une rue. This museum had the name of a street because it was very difficult to give it, to name it upon a concept because all, many of the artifacts come from 
these, these experiences. So my long, long trip uh, doesn't, uh, 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 I, I wanted also to remember a fantastic film because we are in Venice, because we are during the, uh, uh, the film festival, Alain René and Chris Marker made a documentary uh, named upon Les Statues Meurent Aussi, Statues Die, also Statues Die. Uh, 53. And the, the words accompanying this film were, they have a mouth but they don't speak. They have eyes but they don't see. So our history, it's a history of criticism, capacity of reading history, re-reading history, uh, creating a, 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 what the Greeks called dialogos, dialogo, dialogue. And uh, why did I, did I pick this? Because the Italian government decided to uh, restore the two statues I showed from Palmira in the Istituto Centrale Restauro. This is an initiative we, we made a few years ago to restore with a perfect technical approach. You see something here. Then, they came back to Syria. And I want to be very clear, Syria is not a democratic country. But when I was the Minister of Culture, I signed the restitution of a very important statue from Rome, from Italy, uh, La Venere di Cirene, Venus of Cirene, a wonderful Roman city in Libya, to Qatafi. Is Qatafi a democratic leader? Of course not. But does this statue belonging to this land that was removed by Italian colonial experience must remain in Italy? No. And we give it back. It's appropriate at the very, this very same way when I made a strong battle with the many American museums to have back ma Italian masterpieces that were stolen and bought illegally. In, I won't quote the single museum, but uh, we recovered dozen of very important artifacts. That is international law. That is cultural diplomacy. That is somehow, as I was trying to say, soft power. And when we, uh, when I show you, uh, th this is one of the most the most sad images um, uh, from my po my point of view in the world. That is Nimrud. These stones represent the bull-winged bull of Nimrud, destroyed by Daesh, by ISIS. It's still there in this condition. But we created a, an international campaign and we reconstructed the Nimrud bull. This is Presidente Mattarella, Ministro Gentiloni, Ministro Franceschini, inside the Colosseum by a high-level 3D reconstruction made by a prominent Italian restorator and uh, uh, with modern technologies. Then we brought the Nimrud bull in front of UNESCO during the general conference of UNESCO to witness how universal culture, universal art is and must be universal and shared by everybody at the world level. And what I can tell you that gives me hope and joy is that today the Nimrud bull is under construction in the museum of Basra, Basora in Iraq. It will open to the visitors the entrance of this ancient museum showing that history can be destroyed but not cancelled and that humankind has the ability of restart if we use our brain, uh, if we use our intelligence, if we like to uh, 
continue knowing and asking to history rather than emitting decisive sentences. There should have been another picture that is not here, but so I will tell you uh, f very, very few words about it. The final picture should have been the picture of Statuario Publico di Venezia. And allow me to say, because I, I lived for a long time in uh, Campidoglio, in Rome, Capitol Hill, that Musei Capitolini are not the most ancient museum in history, as we always tend to say, because the Pope Sixtus IV gave to the city of Rome Marcus Aurelius statue, the she-wolf, la lupa capitolina, and other, lo spinario, and other very important. So creating the basis for the first public collection, but it was not inaugurated in 1471 when Sixtus the fourth did so, it was inaugurated in 1734. The most ancient public museum in the world is Antisala, della Biblioteca Marciana, lo Statuario Publico. Uh, Famiglia Grimani decided to give their patrimony to the city for a pu public purposes. It started in uh, 15, in, uh, uh, 1523, and it was finalized in 1596. Capitolini Museum started in 1734, the British Museum in 1759, the Louvre in 1792, the Ashmolean in Oxford Science Museum in 1683, then the Prado Metropolitan New York 18. 72 and so on, but the most ancient public museum in the world is here in Venice. Go visit the Statuario and uh, try once again to understand why Venice is a universal city speaking to all humankind. Thank you very much. I think we were all very impressed with this extraordinary collection of images and photographs. It shows that today our courses on uh, cultural heritage have perhaps to be widened to uh, somehow insert the type of questions that Francesco Rutelli put to us. Uh, this is food for thought. And I imagine that many of you may be asking themselves what will happen even of the sculptures we have on the island of San Servolo. Fortunately enough, they are only by Italian artists and most of them do not represent at all public figures or historical figures. We have Mastroianni, Dorazio, Chia, um, <coughs> Consagra and Pomodoro, and fortunately, they probably are safe. But definitely, it is incredible to see all over the world how today questions are being asked about the representation, the symbols that some of the statues represent. And thank you so much, President, for having shown us such an extraordinary collection of uh, figures coming from all over the world. Uh, let me say that having seen so many signs, we would like you to take with you a sign here which represents the double infinity, which was created here by an Italian artist called Pistoletto. In 2005, we invited Pistoletto to come here to the island of San Severo and to spend three months together with his assistants. Now, it is here that he invented 
the third paradise. This is the name that Pistoletto gave to this double sign of infinity. The left ring shows the paradise represented by nature before the appearance of mankind. It was a paradise in itself. The ring on the opposite side, on the left, represents what has been the addition of mankind, the many creations and transformations that man has brought to the world. But the use of resources, the exploitation of what we have on the planet has gone too far. And today we are worried that perhaps we might run into difficulties. President Macron only a few days ago said that the era of abundance is over. And therefore, many years before President Macron, Pistoletto in 2005 invented and theorized on this island this symbol of the third paradise, represented by the central ring, where finally nature and mankind live together in harmony. Well, this is a symbol that we've made our own. Uh, we like to think of Venice International University as the place where we struggle, we strive, and work together to try and invent this third paradise, which should be the aim uh, that humankind should pursue today. So thank you so much. Uh, I would like to express our thanks to all those who have participated and listened to this Lexio Magistralis by Francesco Rutelli. And we would like to give him, besides this message of the, of the third paradise by Pistoletto, a physical sign which I hope will bring him luck. There is nothing I can add to the natural elegance of Francesco Rutelli, but perhaps the tie of the university will add a vibrant color. <laughs> it's red. <laughs> it's the one I'm wearing. <laughs> Which I hope will remind him of this wonderful afternoon we spent together. Thank you so much, Francesco. It's been wonderful to have you with us.